welcome everyone to uh, today's brown bag. It's, uh, um, Every Drop Matters program is a partnership between UNDP and Coca-Cola, now dating back, I think, at least six or seven years. Um, we're pleased to have Dr. Bogachan Benley, who's the project manager of uh, Every Drop Matters pro program uh, for the entire period, pretty much. And uh, I think he was here about a year ago. Well, I mean, like Father Christmas not coming once so you guys going to give this presentation. <laughs> yeah. So he's going to be, he's going to update us on some of the latest work that EDM is doing, um, and uh, including we've, we've basically upscaled the program over the last two years or so from what was originally a Central Europe, Central Asia focus, now we're branching into the Arab states, um, uh, more of Central Asia, and now we're in South Asia, and ultimately we're going to move more into East Asia and the Pacific Islands. We hope. Um, You'll see shortly, um, Coke has had some, uh, sorry, the program has had some uh, important visibility. We had a recent visit by the Secretary General to one of the project sites in Sochi, Russia, which is quite exciting. So Bogachan will tell you about that as well. So without further ado, Bogachan. Thank you very much. Uh, how many people here know about the EDM or heard about the EDM? Oh, one, two, ten. Uh, it's a multi-regional partnership program started in 2006, as I mentioned, initially in the Arbeck region of, uh, of UNDP, and where we have three major components that are access to safe drinking, access to uh, safe drinking water and sanitation, adaptation to climate change and increasing the water productivity, and the awareness raising on the responsible use of water sources. Uh, Initially, we started in the Arbeck region uh, between 2006 and 2011. We were active with 20 projects on the field, starting with Armenia, Croatia, Kazakhstan, Romania, Turkey, and Ukraine, and Russia. And more than 230,000 people benefited from our project interventions and received access to WASH. And finally, over 700,000 people uh, received the awareness raising on the responsible use of water sources. But here, the project system was a bit different than now, the, the way we are implementing it now. Uh, in those uh, years, the UNDP country offices were the implementing agencies of the project. So what they were doing, they were sending us their proposals and together with the Coca-Cola country offices, they were implementing the, the projects uh, together. And uh, in that period, we had a special interest for the Black Sea Basin, following the successful Black Sea Ecosystem Recovery Project of the NDP Jeff, We developed the Black Sea Action Day uh, project, which is the 31st of October, a bit unfortunate day for the Black Sea region, always went. Uh, the main purpose of the activity is not to celebrate or organize the festival, it was to attract the attention of the people living in the Black Sea coastal areas about the problems in the, in the Black Sea and also share the achievements of the, of the BISAR project. Uh, in, in that activity, we managed to uh, attract 40,000 pe people active on the field and reach through media to 10 million people living in the Black Sea coastal areas, the basin areas as well, and uh, produced a BBC documentary and broadcast it on the, on the BBC world. But following these activities, we decided to build something more sustainable and, and, uh, and uh, with an education component in it, and produced the Black Sea Box Education Kit. It is, a, it is an education kit with five chapters inside, summarizing the, the cultural information, the, the geographical information about Black Sea, the flora, fauna, and the problems uh, that are threatening the Black Sea. Well, anybody can accumulate this information, spending like half an hour with the, with the internet, to be honest. What makes Black Sea Bugs special is there are 52 activities and games in the box related to all this information, which helps the children to play these games and learn about the Black Sea. Um, teachers love it, because it's a perfect tool for them to pass this information to children. Children enjoy it. And uh, so far, we have distributed more than 10,000 boxes to the schools. To, I mean, each box helps to one school. 
and uh, it is active in Russia, Ukraine, and Turkey in the coastal areas. And this year we started producing black sea box in Romanian and Bulgarian, uh, and uh, we'll distribute them uh, at the end of the year. And we are now talking with the UNDP in Georgia to, to produce the Georgian version. Uh, this project is approved by the Minister of Education in uh, Ukraine, Russia, and Turkey and recently selected by the Expo 2012 as a best practice and had a, we had a corner and uh, had a chance to represent the Black Sea Bus in the ocean best practice area uh, for six months in, in Korea. And following the success of this Black Sea Bus project, the UN Secretary General made a visit to our, one of our project sites in Sochi and uh, well, he attended even the Black Sea Box lesson with the, with the Russian uh, teachers and the students, which uh, gave us a huge visibility. Now I receive lots of emails from, uh, from several organizations that they want to learn about the Black Sea Box system and, uh, and want to implement it to their patients, which we are very happy because in the first page of Black Sea Box, if you open, you will see that, I mean, the copyright is with you and the people, but we encourage you to copy it. And, and share it and, and produce a similar uh, tool. Um, so, following this success of the EDM at the, in the regional level between 2006 and 2011, we decided to enlarge the geographic cover coverage and, uh, and expand the project to ARBAP and ARBAS in addition to ARBAC regions. And we decided also to change the system a bit. Instead of waiting the proposals from the UNDP country offices, we announced a call for proposal in each country, in, sorry, in 25 countries, and asked the NGOs, CBOs, universities, professionals, and also UNDP country offices to submit us their innovative proposals, their project ideas. So uh, in 2011, we started our activities and these are the results in the Arbeck region. Like we have implemented 30 projects in total in Belarus, Bulgaria, uh, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Romania, Russia, Turkey, Ukraine, and Uzbekistan. Uh, over 230,000 people benefited from our activities. 12 million cubic meters of water replenished to the community, and 15 NGOs uh, partnered with us during the implementation of the projects. And the overall money that we spend in the region is more than $2 million. And the nice part is with these NGOs that we partner, we managed to leverage the almost a half million dollars with their, with their participation. Um, this is not we need the money. This is to, uh, to how to say it, to increase the commitment level of the NGOs. Because if you ask them a seed fund, even they contribute to the project with 5000 or $10,000, check their uh, commitment to the project and, uh, and the implementation level increases. So this is this uh, $400,000 is the, is the total of the... What, what we're trying, is that the other, do those figures suggest the other 15 projects were mainly derived from country office proposals? No, these are all the 15 projects are by uh, NGOs, oh, all, So all 30 are by those NGOs, so some had more than one? As like a couple of them are by the country office, okay. the rest are by the NGO. Okay. But some NGOs they have two points. Right. Uh, one example from Arbec, I mean, uh, instead of explaining the 30 projects from Arbec region, this is the Kazakhstan. It's the saving drinking water. We selected uh, one community, uh, one village with 1,200,000 uh, population, and they have a limited water source, and they uh, they. To survive, they need to do irrigation, <coughs> and they use the same water source for drinking purposes and, and domestic use. And we introduced uh, the drip irrigation system there, but uh, it's not easy, obviously, to, to change the farmer's opinion about the system. So we first created the volunteer action group there, and together with them, we implemented the drip irrigation system and, uh, and uh, after that, we gave the trainings to the neighboring communities and uh, you know, carried the neighboring communities to, to our village and showed them how the system works. 
So finally, uh, we are now saving in that village in Kazakhstan about 20,000 cubic meter of water and, uh, and uh, gave training on the climate change to the communities where we reached to 7,500. And this is all done by $100,000 budget. Uh, EDM in Arbab region, the uh, majority of the projects are about uh, sanitation and, uh, and the water harvesting or aquifer recharge. We are active in four countries, Bangladesh, Nepal, Pakistan, Pakistan and Sri Lanka, 13 projects in total, uh, over 160,000 beneficiaries and nine cubic million, uh, nine million cubic meter of water replenished to the community and nine NGOs and around one million dollars. Uh, of budget. And one example, again from the Arbab region, is Sri Lanka. With only $50,000, we built uh, 25 toilets, the sanitation services. This region, the Trincomale district, uh, suffered a lot uh, during the, the civil war in Sri Lanka, and after that, they also they were also hit by the, by the tsunami. Uh, so, this is uh, it's a very vulnerable area, and uh, they, with these 25 toilets, I have to say, people's life and sanitation significantly improved. But the most important thing, uh, girls, in the, they start to go to school. Uh, I have to admit that before implementing this project, I was not aware that this is very, very important, especially for the girls to go to school. Many of the girls, they do not want to go to school because of this lack of toilet and that they need to share it with, uh, with the other other uh, students it's a it's a big big problem so with fifty thousand dollar we reached we managed to uh, change life of 800 students and, and the family 25 families um, in Arab states we are active in Bahrain Jordan Lebanon Palestine and Emirates you might ask why Emirates I mean it's like a uh, it's pretty rich country, but uh, water is a, is, is a problem. They disaligned the, the seawater, and uh, when you do an awareness raising activity in Emirates, entire Arab uh, Peninsula uh, hears about that because all the media is, is based in, in Dubai. Uh, well, we have 15 projects in total, uh, for, uh, over 40,000 beneficiaries. Two million cubic meter of water replenished, and 12 NGOs working with us. Just one example, again from there. In Lebanon, this is in south of uh, Lebanon, a dry area. Here we work with the American University of Beirut, and uh, we renewed the indigenous technology of the of the catchment of the water harvesting site. This is a, a pretty old water harvesting site based in the in the middle of the village. Unfortunately, due to the sediment accumulation, uh, it's not active anymore. But it's in the people's culture to, to use this uh, site. So what we did there is we renovated the site. And together with the, with the community, with their own capacity, and uh, with their participation as well as laborers, and finally provided uh, water to 100 farmers and 1,200 people with only $75,000 of budget. Uh, we were active uh, to share our results in, in several international events, like the 5th World, World Water Forum and the 6th uh, World Water Forum. And also every year, uh, we are based in Stockholm, so every year we present our results in the Stockholm World Water Week. Also Black Sea Day in Sochi, in Expo in Yeshu, Korea. UN Water Conference, Zaragoza, International Water Summit in Abu Dhabi, and uh, EDM workshops where we gather all the UNDP country offices in, uh, in Bratislava and Istanbul. Uh, I like this picture because this is uh, Muhtar Kent. He is the Coca-Cola's CEO and, uh, and, the board, and the head of the board. Uh, he is uh, cutting the ribbon in one of our project sites in, in Istanbul. And you know Jihan. Uh, we were also active in media recently. The more results we produce, the more interest we receive. Uh, oh, 
this is an embarrassing photo of me here, but the, it helped a lot. Uh, this water harvesting couldn't be explained better. These journalists, they really make you, uh, I mean, they can explain things in that one photo. Um, then we were in National Geographic, a half page event, and the one page in this Revolve magazine, which is very popular. Uh, the Guardian showed interest, especially on the private sector's uh, support to to, to, do, to achieving the WASH MDG. And uh, following that, UNDP's website showed interest to our results and obviously UN Secretary General's visit, not only in the, in the, uh, in the UN website, but also in many newspapers in, in Russia, because he was also meeting with, uh, with the President Putin. And these results, uh, especially Black Sea Works, mentioned a lot in, in Russia. So, as a result, well, no need to explain your MVP to us, to ourselves, but we are strong in knowledge as technical background. And we have the network with the governments, and we have the understanding and mandate for human development, and have the project management capacity and experience. So, what about Coca Cola? Coca Cola is, has the, got the commitment in sustainability because it's in their uh, 2020. They have a target. They want to give back all the water that they use for their for their products. And they have a business strategy. Water is their main ingredient, so it is very important for them. They don't enjoy to be only a donor. They want to be a partner. Instead of writing a check and waiting the progress reports, they want to work together with us on the field, which helps a lot, I have to admit. And they are business uh, people, result-oriented. There is the money, where is the result? They, they need to see the result in a very short time. So instead of waiting like three years to see the project outputs, 18 months is a long term for that. So, uh, well, which helps us, uh, you know, to, to bring the outputs in a, in a a very and use the time very efficiently and finally they are great in uh, communication and awareness raising like when you do a meeting with them you watch yourself on the TV and the same, the same. so they have a great uh, linkage with the, with the media so as a result what makes EDM maybe different or special is uh, EDM is strong in technical knowledge very effective in communication we use all their uh, Coca-Cola's experience there. Since we have the, the, we are using the call for proposal every uh, term from the NGOs and CBOs, we receive creative, practical, and innovative ideas from the CBOs, communities, NGOs, universities. Uh, I have to admit, working with Coca-Cola is, is good because very strong in financial contribution, never been delayed on, on receiving the funds. It's always available. And, uh, and also, they are strong on delivering the results. So sometimes we struggle with, uh, <coughs> with how do you say, we never finish the project in two years. Everything is in less than two years and seeing the results. But we also introduce them that we need to do the projects with the community-based approach. Uh, one thing that I should criticize about our project here is when we start the project, they did not understand. This community-based approach was confusing for them. Uh, it was hard for me especially to explain them that you can't collect the rainwater and tell the community that you will drink it. I mean, the community will, will refuse that. But Coca-Cola didn't understand that. I mean, here is the money. Why don't we hire the, you know, the contractor and, and we, we build the water harvesting system and make the community drink the water? No, the community will not drink that water. So this is the this was our uh, our conflict. I mean, at the beginning. But now they enjoy the idea because they see that our projects are sustainable and communities are enjoying them and using them. So that makes the, the EDM perhaps a bit different. I mean, it's fast on the field, but also community -based. So that's all about EDM. Um, if you have any questions, that's about it. I see that we started with a few people, but suddenly. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Bogotan. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, I actually have to go in a few minutes to deal with a family obligation, but please stay as long as you wish. You have to well, 
we'll do with this. Um, so yeah, the floor is open for questions. Maybe uh, do you want to moderate a thread? Well, you have to ask questions. First. <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot of questions. I have a question, and uh, I, I hesitate to take the the, um, the time because they're going to just come by your office and ask. I know you're leaving. It's actually to you. Oh, okay. but thank you very much for that presentation. <laughs> I appreciate it. Uh, no, but I think maybe others might be interested, and that is, um, um, I think it's very interesting you were telling me you were, you were in a sense, <coughs> informing uh, the uh, Coca-Cola, uh, uh, whatever the philanthropy group, you're giving them, educating them a little bit about some development issues, and all, I think in the course of this, and I guess, Andy, my question too is, um, what, uh, what is the future in terms of Coca-Cola cooperation with, with the water scheme? I mean, obviously water is, as you said, their, their priority. Is this something that will be sort of continued in the future and the partnership or what is yeah. and so what's your prognosis? The near and short term, the near and long term plans for scaling it up. I mean, we're already scaling it. We started in Arbeck. Mm -hmm. Now we're in Arbeck, Arbes, and Arbat. And we're looking into scaling it up more into Arbat, very likely in the well, Coca Cola was already working bilaterally with UNDP China. We're now in the process of integrating that program into the overall EDM framework, which is both an implementation and a branding component. Uh, and then we're going to move into Southeast Asia and ultimately probably the Pacific, which faces quite severe water supply and sanitation issues, uh, access issues. Um, and ultimately, and it could be Africa. Africa. we could even be moving into Africa. There's a, so there's great plans. It started at one million a year. It's currently two million a year. Yep. Next year it goes to three million a year, and it could after that go to five or more million. So it's 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 getting quite successful. That's good. But this was a new thing for Coca-Cola as well. I mean, they have uh, they have three major programs about the about the water. I mean, one is with the with the weir, but this is like a traditional thing with them. It's quite been going on ages. The other one is the rain program they have in Africa, which is a multi-year initiative, and the third <laughs> one is is EDA. So it's a new thing for them as well to receive proposals from NGOs and then working at this level and together implementing the projects with us on the field. And uh, I have to say that they really enjoy it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for the interesting presentation. I was wondering if there is a gender perspective uh, mainstream in the, in the entire initiative. You already mentioned some of the results in one of the projects, but I was wondering if, if, if there is a major one. Also, if you can mention some of the challenges, especially in your community-based uh, development approach, uh, in, in including the communities in, in uh, participatory uh, processes, decision making. I also have a question on how do you uh, distinguish Coca-Cola from Pepsi, but I will Google that. <laughs> okay. So thank you. <laughs> well, I got a training. I will never mention the other company's <laughs> name. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, the thing is about the gender, I have to admit that in the first regional component, uh, when we first started the project, it was up to the up to the uh, project management managers capacity, like uh, between 2006 and 2011, unfortunately, we did not have that much gender perspective. But uh, now, when we do a project, it is uh, it's a must thing, like to develop the baseline uh, of each site so that to monitor the impact results in the future. So gender is, is, is a one component. Um, your, uh, about the conflict during the project implementation, well, the only thing is, uh, as I said, if you do not spend the money coming from Coca-Cola, you might lose it. If you do not spend it on time, Coca-Cola will take it back and will send, it, will use it for other purposes because it's in their business system. Like they have this amount of money and they have to spend it that year. Uh, that is one thing. But working with the communities, yes, it is not the most pleasant brand in the world that you do not say probably, okay, we are doing a project with Coca-Cola when you pronounce this name. Yes, people's face change, obviously, at the beginning. Not only, not with the communities. I mean, when I was in the Fifth World Water Forum, when we said Coca-Cola, I remember our colleagues from FAO, they, they were like, they were shocked. Like, why are we working with Coca-Cola? But now, uh, since 2007, how many years passed? Like five, six years passed? Now it's different. People are used to see private sector in this type of work and 
and they do not criticize us anymore. And uh, it's, it's a norm. Uh, with the communities, well, the problem is classic with every project. Uh, community wants more, and you are limited with your, in your budget. And, uh, but one, if you engage them in the project management, then you, you manage to, to solve the, the problems. Yes, for example. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if you want to elaborate a little bit on how we engaged with Coca-Cola on post-2015 discussions, because I think this is uh, linked to the you know donor versus partner. Mm -hmm. um, and secondly, I have a question. I've heard a number of times that partnership with Coca-Cola is the most successful partnership of UNDP with a private sector company. Uh, well, I mean, I, <laughs> I wonder if you have any networking with other, you know, cooperations that, that, that UNDP has with other private sector companies, yeah. what kind of discussions you have, or you, if any. Yeah. And my last question is, um, is linked to what you were just saying, that indeed, you know, it's a, there is an added value for Coca-Cola to work with us, because we do help them with their PR, and, you know, to, to improve their image um, in many ways. And what is this uh, 2020 benchmark for Coca-Cola that they want to, to do, what is it, and, you know, if there is a potential for us to scale up, because I'm sure they use a lot of water <laughs> for their production purposes, and maybe, you know, if they can match it with whatever contribution they give to UNDP, in my uh, humble opinion, that would be a, a big scale up. Okay, first of all, the 2015 thing, uh, in, in two months we will have a meeting in their headquarters in Atlanta, and we will discuss about this. So. I mean, I can't say much about this. Uh, but after <laughs> November, we can talk about this. Mm -hmm. uh, about their, uh, about our engagement with other private sector organizations, yes. We were, uh, Carlsberg company approached us recently, and they want to join <coughs> to, to this program. But the problem here is, while we are receiving $10 million from Coca-Cola, we don't want to see another company coming with half million dollar and benefit from the all the, you know, the brand and, and the activities. No, we want to see magic funds. That is, uh, that is our uh, uh, red line. But uh, Carlsberg joined and uh, there was another uh, uh, company from Ohio recently they approached us called Grife. It's uh, packaging industry. They are on. They are like 125 years old company, and I don't know how they find us, but they are showing interest to, to join uh, EDM. But they are learning. I mean, it's a new thing for for these uh, private companies. And soon in Stockholm, I will have a meeting with the CEO Water Mandate Group, where we will present the EDM and. Uh, obviously, we want to attract more private sector organizations into into our system, and this is also approved by by Coca Cola. I guess only Pepsi will be the problem uh, to join in the, in the in the program, but they are open to any other uh, organization uh, in the world. Um, yes, no, but the question. Mo my question was more about if you network with uh, partners of UNDP, like Bill Gates Foundation. Mm -hmm. You know, those with whom no, the already works. If you have that level of uh, only with the private sector so far, we did not uh, we did not try with the, you know, the tradition guns like working with the other organizations. No, only with the private sector so far. I mean, there is no rule about that to be honest. But it started with the private sector and, and we continue. Uh, yes, one more question. Uh, about 2020. Ah, this is Coca-Cola's uh, business target. They want to. They are using the water sources to produce Coca-Cola, or with their supply chain, like you know, they not only sell Coke product, they also sell like juices, tea, coffee, even. And uh, to produce these products, their supply chain uses uh, water and agriculture. So their uh, 2020 target is to. Replenish uh, the water that back the water that they are using for their uh, for their products. I don't know if they will achieve that. But one thing uh, about our program, it's our red line. We never implement any project close to their factory. So all the project sites are away from their uh, their plants. 
And we never used the Coca-Cola brand in our, I mean, so visible in our in our project sets. It's mostly we use the EDM logo. Whatever uh, we present or like when we have a field activity or anything, it's always the EDM logo and there's a small side is the Coca-Cola. And I have to admit, Coca-Cola never pushes us pushes us and asking us to use the Coca-Cola logo in the first line or anything. They rather stay at the. Yeah. Um, thank you for a great presentation. Um, I just wanted to ask you about the future goals of this program because um, a lot of countries are becoming extremely water stressed. Um, and that, according to experts, is going to lead, hopefully it will not, to major wars, India, Pakistan, and now Ethiopia and Egypt. So I think this is, um, this is a very important um, project, not only for saving water, but for sustaining world peace. Um, so if, if you could talk a little bit about future goals, how you intend to scale this up. And uh, finally, I just have a comment about uh, the boxes that we, you were using for um, school children. Mm -hmm. I think that's very interesting side of this project because I'm, I'm an intern here, and I've worked with Coca-Cola Pakistan before, like okay. about five years ago. Um, you see a lot of projects in which the supply side is being managed, but you see very few projects like what you have mentioned that uh, specifically you target a demand side. I mean, you teach children how to conserve water better, and maybe a great way to do that in the future would be to uh, maybe, uh, include some stuff about conservation in curriculums. So I'll just let you answer the question about future goals. Thank you. Uh, thank you. The nice question. Uh, the future goal of India, you know, the main objective is the MDG, achieving the wash MDG target. But the next step will be uh, first uh, expand the, the territory of India. I mean, just as we, just before Andy mentioned, uh, soon we will uh, expand the project to, to China and, uh, and, uh, and the Asia Pacific region and uh, also Africa region. That's that's the, the, the first goal. And the second thing is uh, the WASH MDG is kind of achieved you know, uh, before 2015 target. Now we are trying to introduce the SDG, the Sustainable Development Goal uh, target into into EDM. So this is the this is the, where we see our, our future direction. And about the, the Black Sea Box, Black Sea Box is a tool, you know, to to carry a message to the to the children between the age of nine and twelve. So you can carry any type of message with using this tool. And we are open for that. I mean, we want to share our, our tool. Uh, for example, uh, they produced the Baikal box following the Black Sea box. Using the same activities, games, they produced the, the, you know, the Baikal uh, lake information, gathered them, and, and uh, replicated our technology. And there will be Dnipro, there's Dnipro box available, as far as I know. There will be Dnipro box and, and maybe Volga box in the future. And uh, then Baltic box is in discussion, like some of the colleagues, other organizations are approaching us. So this is a tool and we can do that, but it is up to time and, and, uh, and, uh, and funds. Also, I wanted to ask about the government's roles in, in water pollution. 
position and, and in these countries that you're working in, that you're mainly working uh, with the private sector? Yeah. Um, first of all, the reason we do not work close to Coca-Cola factory is mainly Coca-Cola is using the groundwater sources, or, or I mean, the middle amount is the, is the surface water source. So if uh, we don't want to be working with that community because there are municipalities there, and we don't want to be seen like a legal mechanism, you know, supporting the municipality, giving the authority to Coca-Cola factory to work in there. I mean, it's, it's beneficial. I mean, we don't want to be into this discussion. So it's better for us to stay away from their legal uh, communication with the municipalities and, and their water usage rights, etc. It's not our job at all. I mean, their uh, bottling partners is, first of all, is a different, separate organization than the, the company's issue. I mean, there's the Coca-Cola company and there is a bottling partner. So we don't want to be engaged with any bottling partner of Coca-Cola. Uh, that's our plan. And the second thing is, uh, yeah, if you work with the community there, you mean it will confuse people like as if we are bribing the community who is, you know, in the close to the Coca-Cola factory. We don't want to be seen like that. Uh, that is the main reason. And the second thing is when uh, to Oksana's question, when we started this project. Uh, it was not a common thing for anybody working with the private sector organizations. I mean, it was a very new thing. Like, but now I hear that Nestle is doing projects with, uh, with other organizations. Recently, PepsiCo arrived to Stockholm International Water Institute, and they they tried to build a partnership uh, with them. And uh, CV, I think they selected them as uh, they gave them an industrial water ever. Um, so this thing is changing. I mean, Carlsberg, they approach us. They want to do something as a CSR activity on protecting the water sources. The mental, the attitude is changing here. It's not something that we did. It's perhaps Coca-Cola was pioneer comparing to the other ones and they approached us. It's not UNDP knocked their door and wanted to do a project. Uh, yeah, I hope I answered your question. Just, just a very quick because you said uh, you, you used to work by the community uh, close to the factory. It's just you could also turn the logic and say, well, you know, if the community is close to uh, we're close to an extractive industries, so the logic where we look into working with private partners and extractive companies is that you should that the communities in the vicinity of, of operations, factories for for, for Coca Cola or mines, for instance, they are the ones suffering the most, so they are the ones that should be compensated. So, you know, that's right. But, but that's uh, Coca-Cola bottling factory, I mean, bottling partners responsibility. It's not the Coca-Cola company or, or UNDP responsibility. That's the difference. Our responsibility here is to, we ask the communities to submit proposals. And then, based on the following the best innovative idea, we build the pilot sites. That our responsibility is this. Otherwise, then we have to run to, to every Unilever to to whatever company you ask in the world and, and save the environment that they are uh, working in. But that's not my our responsibility. Okay. And the, the relationship with governments? Now, relationship with governments, that's a very good, good question. Uh, when we select our project sites, we always approach the government. But this is UNDP's you know, uh, priority. Like, we always uh, in close contact with the government. So, so we inform the government agencies, the stakeholders, since the beginning of the project, so that through the end of the project, based on the success, the policy makers, they, uh, they develop the new policy out of the project. This is uh, how we uh, design uh, EDM. So always uh, at the beginning of the project, we inform the government agencies and ask their support during the implementation. Yes. Um, okay, I had actually uh, two questions. Uh, one is a follow-up question on the government relations. Um, I think uh, you have fantastic uh, best practices uh, in all, all these countries, and, and probably you are also uh, looking at uh, scaling up. No? So in terms of government relations, 
if the uh, best practice you produce can be internalized in the code, that is probably a fantastic way to scale up. Yeah. So I'm sure that you, you're looking at it. And if you have any good sort of uh, example to, to um, describe uh, your policy dialogue mm -hmm. process, mm -hmm. I'd love to, to learn about it. Okay, another thing is uh, the uh, going back to the title of this from back uh, uh, discussion that the private sector role yes. and you said that not the donor but the partner yes. and that is fantastic way to describe this uh, relationship and you said it's not just the money yes. so I, I would love to learn how uh, Coca-Cola actually provides m the additional values mm -hmm. more than more dollars. than the, yes yeah. okay I will I better give examples from, uh, for the both questions uh, about the government's um, I mean, the policies and how things have changed. Uh, in Armenia, we, we work in the city called Dilijan, uh, next to the Akshter River. And the problem there is the after the Soviet era, all the wastewater is, yeah. is, is polluting the Akshter River, and there is also a transboundary issue. The river is going, the downstream is Azerbaijan and already both countries, they have several conflicts. Um, there, we, we organized the awareness raising campaigns and, and you know, explain this problem and uh, try to, and developed a physical treatment plant to collect this wastewater, at least to stop the, 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 the solid uh, waste uh, polluting the, the river. And we engaged, uh, we informed the Armenian water uh, and sewage company and uh, Armenian governments and Dilijan municipality as well and informed them since the beginning and we received help from them for designing the project. They designed the, you know, the physical plant and etc. And then suddenly the Armenian government showed more interest to what we are doing out of our awareness raising activities and they put more funds on, on our project. So from we started with $150,000. <coughs> then, with the government's contribution, we reached to half million. And with the Dilijan municipality's contribution, we reached to $750,000. So, you see, we only with $150,000 we started. But since we touched the button, and everybody showed interest there, and with their engagement, things have changed. Mm -hmm. After their uh, president, he was visiting uh, Dilijan, and they briefed him the, our project, and with his support, uh, EBRD get involved, and we reached to $3 million with their contribution. Now they are changing the entire sewage network in that city, building the physical plant with our source, and also the biological treatment plant, so the Akstev River will be totally clean and you know, affect the, the downstream country as a region. So this is uh, the seed fund, how much we, we can achieve. Another example is from Romania, but okay, time is short. Uh, your other question, sorry. Uh, the, uh, what the collector does more than money? Sorry, it's coming. What the collector does on the ground, like yeah, more than money. Ah. Well, many things. I mean, first of all, they are excellent in communication and awareness raising activities. And uh, one of our components is that, for example, in Croatia, Gachka, we introduced the ecotourism mm -hmm. project to uh, Gachka River Basin, which is like seven kilometer uh, on the ground, the river flows, but uh, then it's an uh, underground uh, river and it's the main drinking water source for Croatia. And in this seven, seven kilometer of, this, uh, of the river, we introduced the ecotourism activity there and informed the community that if they keep the area clean, they will make money on it. Like we upgraded the restaurants, we upgraded their menus, we upgraded the sanitation services and made it a natural park. And then people start to come over there, but uh, the local community, they they learn that nobody should pollute the area, I mean, uh, with any garbage or etc. 
And they are making lots of money out of it now. They have an income. For example, here I benefited a lot from the Coca-Cola Croatia, the, 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 the local experts, because they know about the tourism activities, which we do not have much experience on. Also, we uh, introduced uh, the H2O Life, uh, the American Natural History Museum, I think. They are the owner of that uh, exhibition. And we managed to bring it to the Istanbul, the fifth World War II Forum. Uh, I have to tell you that with UNDP bureaucracy, I was not able to bring it to Istanbul. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, off the record, let's talk about this, because it cost me a half million dollars to bring that museum. But I used the Coca-Cola procurement people, and uh, they they just uh, they paid the, the two minutes. And okay, let's openly talk about this. We stole it from the Italians. It was going to Milan, and we paid the before the Italians, and we managed to bring it to Istanbul. And more than fifty-six thousand people visited that during the World War II. Forum. It, this is uh, flexibility and and, and and some financial part. So they are not only donor, they are our partners. We have nine minutes and at least two questions. Yeah. I actually had a question. <laughs> um, quick question, I think, um, is about how you're capturing results and inspiring scale-up. It's a follow-up on something first, but also when you put up the call for proposals, can you can people see what's been done in other places as inspiration? And, oh, yes. Um, and also, I guess, for communications purposes, mm -hmm. when you're telling us some terrific stories. I know some of them are are out there, but if you're doing more in terms of... Uh, we, we developed reports, first of all, um, and we, we share them uh, with everybody, and we send them to all the country offices. But the main reason that I'm here is um, meeting with the evaluation office to develop the database together with them and to share it and produce an online system, which is open for everybody, to, to learn about the other countries' experiences and the project results. So uh, this is something that we are keen on, uh, on developing. No, I, was, I was curious about a statement that you made a little bit earlier that um, you know Coca-Cola came to us, we didn't go to them. Right. Um, and it, so I work within the Innovations and Development Alliance cluster here at the UNDP, which manages global relationships with private sector and sets kind of the standards for how UNDP interacts with private sector. Right. Um, and I've noticed in my, my short time here, I've been here for a year, that UNDP is very reactive to partnerships rather than proactive. Mm -hmm. uh, we, you know, we, Carlsberg approaches us and we say, oh, that's interesting, let's do something. Uh, rather than us saying, hey, there's these new SDGs, um, we would like some, you know, some assistance from private sector, mm -hmm. let's pick out the, the most prominent members uh, that would benefit it from a win-win you know, um, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. partnership and, and on these specific issues and build the strategy around that. Right. And I think that would be more effective than, than our kind of reactive mm -hmm. stance. And I'm wondering what your, your, your perspective is on, you know, uh, on, on being proactive versus reactive in this. Nice. Uh, well, first thing is uh, you are not expecting that much interest from when we started the project. Actually, I'm not sure how they build up EDM because they hired me once they uh, made the agreement with the Coca-Cola. But the only thing I know, the person who is the, the main driving force behind this partnership from the Coca-Cola side, he used to work at UN in the past. So he basically knows about the UNDP, the system, and when he joined uh, Coca-Cola, he explained them about the MDGs and, and our HDR approach and etc. So then they approached UNDP and this is how EDM formed. Yeah. And I joined the program by that time. So I'm not sure uh, how was it sure. at the, at before me. But now, uh, uh, as I said, when we first started the project, we were trying to defend that same people, more explaining, it's not bad to work with business people. I mean, they are not evils. They use the water sources. They want to contribute to the community. Let's benefit from them rather than fighting with them. So we were not expecting that we will have more donors or more partners in our program. So this is something in our coming steering committee that we will decide as well how we should uh, work with the, with the other donors. We have some uh, statements and there are some agreements in our project document. 
but we want to develop a systematic way to approach to more uh, private sector organizations in the future. Yeah. So I have to admit that we, are not, we were not ready for this type of interest, but yeah. more results we see on the field, there are more people uh, coming on board. Yeah. But I will be happy if we can hear from your Yeah. Yeah. That, that would be excellent. Yeah. yeah. I had a question maybe before. I don't know if everybody remembers the first five minutes. It's good, so take it. Okay. <laughs> and more on the sustainability part of it. Uh, having seen other uh, community water projects, uh, even if it's small, it's still they're normally infrastructure projects. Do you have a mechanism in place to follow up on how it looks so six months, twelve months after? Or yeah. Normally, many systems right. break down and nobody That's has true. the capacity to build them up. Uh, once again, that's the main reason we went in Europe in this, in this week. Uh, together with the SGP program and the evaluation office, we are building this mechanism, how to follow up all these projects. Because these are infrastructure projects with seed funds, and their impact will be visible in one or two years. Because when you provide water and sanitation, there's improving health, education, income, etc., and it requires time to, to measure. But in our system, we have the baseline studies, and uh, now I'm working with the evaluation office what type of questionnaires we should uh, pose to the, to, the, to the communities to measure this impact and, and measure how the projects are successful. Um, so uh, in, a, in a year time, we will go to the field and, and evaluate all of our uh, projects. On the field. Do you see yourself working in doing the <laughs> well, it's not only up to me, there's a steering committee uh, on top of the project, which is 50 person Coke and 50 person DP. Yes, I mean, this uh, is uh, absolutely. Absolute. that are very essential to the system itself. I wonder what ends up being compromised in that scenario. Well, first of all, the they were not aware of the MEDU system. I mean, it's a new thing for, for many of their, uh, of their technical and communication stuff. So it's, it's a new thing. The reason is uh, they want to see the, the project's results in the short term is it's the, it's the business mentality. I mean, the, if they put the money, they want to see the result I mean, as I said, they put half the dollar and they build something in two minutes. Or uh, they go to a meeting to a, one country and they agree on building a factory. I, I witnessed that point. Like, in the same day, they agree to build the factory and they come back. So it is, it is that, that uh, fast. So waiting three years or four years to, to see a project result is, is not even close to their mentality. But now they understood it. They understood that if nobody uses, like you mentioned, I mean, if sustainability is a serious issue, if nobody uses your intervention, uh, there's no point to spend that money. I mean, it's better to, to wait and to see the results in the long term. Um, is that the answer? I mean, I was just wondering, like, what potential risks yeah. it could pose for UNDP to start such as other private sector organizations? There, uh, there won't be any risk. I mean, uh, this this will, frankly speaking, will increase our, our sources, and uh, we can expand to, to other areas. Um, for example, I'm not sure, I don't think that Coca-Cola is in, in they sell Coca-Cola in Iran. But maybe with the, with the other organization, you can do projects in Iran. That's